35, then turn left, turn left on to Charlie and contact her. Hello YouTube, Captain Mac here, and as the title suggests, this is a landing tutorial. Now this is take two on this because I spent a lot of time sort of bumping my gums on the first one and it's just taking too long. We don't want to spend too much time on this, but we do want to go over because some people are having some issues with it. So, three aspects to a good landing. I don't care what anybody else tells you, people can argue with me all they want. I know there are better pilots than me out there and maybe they have a different method. But as far as I'm concerned, there's basically three aspects to a good landing. The approach the transition and the touchdown everything else falls within those so a good landing starts with you guessed it a good approach you want a good smooth landing it starts with a good smooth approach what do i mean by that you want to be you you want to have a what's the word i'm looking for now my brain doesn't want to work properly didn't have a problem talking last time you need to be established on a stabilized approach what, what does that mean okay in, in the airline industry, uh, for professional pilots, and if you're a professional pilot and you have a, your two cents on this, please feel feel free to throw it in there. But by a certain distance from the airport, they're supposed to be established on a. Um, oh, my brain doesn't want to work. Uh, on a stabilized approach. Thank you. That sort of jumped in there at the last second. A stabilized approach. What is a stabilized approach? It's where my speed is set where I want my speed to be. My aircraft is configured the way I want my aircraft to be configured. And I'm ready to land the airplane in that, in that configuration and with that speed setting. And that allows me to fly a consistent glide slope from whatever altitude I'm at down to... Uh, the elevation of the of the runway, the, the field elevation, and then go into my transition and then my touchdown. Okay, so before we get up here, because we're almost to Phoenix already, w what is the transition? We've already talked about the approach. Okay, we want to be on a stabilized approach. We want the aircraft configured the way that we're going to have it when we land, which I'm going to start doing as I'm talking here. I'm bringing the landing gear down, setting up my flaps, and trying to get my speed where I want it to be. Okay, what's the transition? The transition is actually that that space between the descent or the approach to the touchdown. Okay, now we've got this idea in our head, whether it's from uh, the the FSX uh, tutorials, uh, 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 built-in uh, flight lessons, or whatever. I don't know, but we've got this idea in our head, or at least some of us do, that we go from uh, descent, and it's like at the last second you pull back you yank back on the stick and hope for the best and try and and try and stick it and do so nice and smooth and that's not how it's going to work folks it just isn't going to work that way so what is the transition the transition is that point okay when we get to around 10 feet above the runway all right around 10 feet above the runway and if you have altitude call outs by all means take advantage of them all right, and I'll talk more about altitude callouts when we land the next airplane. All right, when you get to about 10 feet above the runway, you pull lightly back on the yoke as you reduce throttle. But I'm not flaring the aircraft at this point. Not at the transition phase. We're not flaring the aircraft at the transition phase. Okay, what we're doing is leveling the aircraft to bleed off the rest of that speed. That's what I want to do at the transition phase. When I level off that aircraft, basically I'm just trying to bleed off that last little bit of speed until I reach the speed that I want to land at. Now some of you have heard, you know, V-Ref or V-Approach speed, okay? These, these are the speeds, technically V-Ref is the speed I want to land at, whereas V-Approach speed is the speed that I want to approach at, right? Okay, so what's the difference? We're not going to talk about it. It doesn't really matter. You need to pick the speed you're going to land at. And then you should fly the approach just a few knots higher than that. That way, when you bleed off that last little bit of speed, because I was in a stabilized approach, what do you think happens? If the aircraft is, let's say the aircraft is descending at 200 feet per minute, just as an example, and I'm doing it at 100 knots, stabilized. What happens when I reduce that rate of descent to 10 feet per minute? The speed bleeds off. What happens is the speed bleeds off. The aircraft starts to descend a little bit more, right? That's the flare. That's when you start to flare right there. You understand the difference there? Okay. We don't flare until after we transition. And as you can see, we're coming up on the glide slope here now. Now, it's a little hard to see in this payware version here. But 
lights, you see I've got two two white and two red lights. Okay, that's my PAPI, which is what? It's a precision approach indicator. Okay, my PAPI tells me whether or not I'm on glide slope. If I have two white lights and two red lights, I'm on glide slope. If I have, right now you can see I have three white lights and one red light, what does that mean? It means I'm a little high. If I have three red lights and one white light, what would that mean? I'm a little low. And of course, all white or all red just means you're way too high or you're way too low, all right? So what I want to do is establish myself on the glide slope, two white and two red lights, at a consistent rate of descent and a consistent speed. I want to descend at about 600 feet per minute and around 105 knots. And that's actually a little fast for this aircraft, but I'm not going to do the typical really slow approach because otherwise we're going to be here all day. So I'm still on a stabilized approach, it's just at a slightly higher speed than I might fly it otherwise. Now, a friend of mine, as you may have heard in the past, a friend of mine flies King Airs for a living and he said the best way to land a King Air is to just fly it by hand. And what he means by that is, first of all, we're not using the ILS to land it. And second of all, he told me, not, don't play with the throttles a lot, don't play with uh, your trim a lot, just use the yoke and fly the aircraft in. Now, that's key. We fly the aircraft all the way to the runway. You don't just point it at the runway and hope for the best. You have to fly it to the runway. You fly it until those wheels are all the way down. You're not done flying the airplane until all of it is on the ground. All right. So there's our 300 foot call out. We're looking for that transition phase, which is going to be between 20 and 10 feet. We're going to start to gently pull back on the yoke, and we're going to level the aircraft off while reducing throttle. Now, because it takes a while for these engines to wind down, we're going to reduce throttle just a little bit early here. 100. 50. 40. Throttle's already coming back. 30. Watch. 20. 20. 20. Starting to level 10. off. There's 10 feet. Let the speed bleed. And then see how I come back a little bit more. Oh, look at that. Smooth as silk. That was awesome right there. That's exactly how you do it. So you see what I'm doing. I'm not flying down to that last couple of feet and then yanking back on the yoke, all right? And I'm certainly not flying the nose down into the ground there. The key is that transition phase. You fly the aircraft all the way down and between tw 10 and 20 feet, you start to transition. As I'm transitioning, I'm reducing throttle on the aircraft and allowing it to Traffic. slow down, okay? Transition is not flare. It's leveling the aircraft. I'm leveling the aircraft off that's the transition phase. As that speed starts to bleed off, the, the, you automatically go into the flare because I don't want the thing to just drop out of the sky. So I transition, start to level the aircraft off, and then as the speed bleeds off and it starts to descend a little more, I simply pull back a little bit more on the yoke. Now, in the King Air, this takes a this you know this that was what you know from transition phase to touchdown phase is what 15 seconds maybe something like that. It's different in other aircraft. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to land on, on uh, we're going to land at the same airport, but we're going to do it in a 737 now, and let's see the difference in how a landing takes place in that aircraft. Now, if you haven't taken a, an opportunity yet, go ahead and take a look down in the comments section. I left a link in there for a call out gauge that gives you the altitude callouts uh, in any aircraft. You can put the gauge in there, you install it in whatever aircraft you want. Basically, if you have default aircraft or freeware aircraft that don't provide those callouts for you, you can put this gauge in there, then you got your callouts and you're good to go. And callouts, they're a huge help. They definitely let you understand where the aircraft is in space, which helps you set up your transition into your flare and so on. Now, here we are, we're approaching the same runway. We're in our 737. Uh, we've already stabilized ourselves at 4,500 feet, uh, but we still obviously need to go into the approach itself here. And uh, let's see, how far are we from the airport here? We're still quite a ways out. We're, we're not going to intercept the ILS from where we're at right now. Jamil, the next waypoint we have here, that is the start of uh, the ILS itself for the approach to this runway. And until we get within 20 miles, which we're pretty close, but you got to get within 20 miles typically, at least for FSX, before it'll allow you to intercept or, or receive the uh, signal from that. Once we've done that though, once once we get a little closer here, we're going to hit our localizer switch, which is this one right here, 
and then once we've established ourselves on the localizer and it's locked in it'll say LOC here and then we'll hit the approach switch and uh, the uh, VNAV will change to approach once we intercept the glide slope and that's just the basics of flying in ILS. I'll do an ILS approach tutorial another time because it's different in, in different airplanes especially in freeware or default. So let's not worry about that right now. So I'm going to break away for just a minute here and uh, as we get a little bit closer I'm going to show you uh, how we establish ourselves on a stabilized approach so that we can make a good landing here. So I'll be back in just a sec. Alright, we're almost to uh, the waypoint Jamil here, which means we're, uh, that's where we want to intercept the glide slope. So let's make sure uh, that we've gone ahead and intercepted our localizer. You can see immediately that changed to VOR slash LOC. So we were pretty much on the localizer uh, path already. So now that we've established uh, ourselves on the localizer, we can hit the approach switch and now you can see that glide slope is in white down here while we're in altitude hold mode and as soon as this diamond gets to the center here it's going to intercept the glide slope and it's going to fly it for us now we want to intercept that glide slope where we want to start our final approach at about 180 knots and we're going to be landing at about 127 knots so as soon as we actually start our descent into that final approach on the ILS here we're going to slow our speed all the way down to our landing reference speed which is 127 knots plus 5 which puts us at 132 so we're going to slow to 132 knots bring in flaps and landing gear as we go to help us slow and of course to maintain the proper lift on the aircraft and then we're going to we're going to fly all the way down to the runway now i'm not going to let i'm not going to let the autopilot fly it all the way but once we get established in that stabilized approach i'll go ahead and take over the aircraft because it's stabilized at that point i don't have to do anything except fly it to the runway and then we'll do the same thing we did in that King Air we're gonna fly the aircraft all the way to the runway we don't just let it you know it's it's not a lawn dart you don't just throw it at the runway and let it go okay you gotta fly it all the way to the runway we're gonna have the same uh, transition as we had before so when we get to now the transition is different in this aircraft and that's important I want you to understand that it is different in, in each aircraft and in this one there's a big difference actually the way you do the transition in the 737 is as soon as you hear that 10 foot call out you cut throttles all the way to the rear not you don't yank them back but you know just smoothly and quickly roll your throttles all the way to the rear and lightly pull back on the stick to level the aircraft and you're gonna let it settle it it it's literally it's gonna go from transition right into flare almost instantaneously it's very little effort or work on your part all right but it's imperative that you pull those throttles all the way back. If you don't, you're going to float all the way down the runway. So as soon as you hear that 10 foot call out, okay, you want to go ahead and pull your throttles all the way to the rear, and you want to go ahead and gently, gently pull back on the stick. This aircraft has tons of lift in it. If you yank on that stick, uh, what, what do you think is going to happen? You yank back on that stick, this thing's going to climb, you're going to float all the way down the runway, you're going to have to do a go around. I'm literally talking, it's gently pulling back on the stick. If you do that every time, especially if you're flying the PMDG NDX, if you do it just like that every time, as soon as you hit 10 feet, throttles all the way to the rear, gently pull back on the stick, keep it pointed down the runway, you're going to land less than 100 feet per minute every single time. I'm telling you, I do it all the time on this thing. All right, we've absolutely got ourselves established here. And uh, what we want to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn the auto throttle off. Normally I do this a little sooner. Auto throttle's off, let's take the autopilot off. And we're gonna fly this aircraft all the way to the runway. And I'm reducing throttle just a little bit. And the reason I'm reducing throttle is because I actually want this aircraft to slow down a little bit more because I want to land around 127 knots. You can see we got just a little low there. I just pulled the nose up a little bit. Forget about the airplane in front of us. He actually flew underneath us when I had the video paused. And you're not supposed to do that, and he's just annoying me. Okay, listen to the call outs. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Throttles all the way back. See, I just barely pulled back on the stick. And we still floated just a little bit. We're down now, in case you're wondering. That's how smooth that was. <laughs> okay, we, we landed, uh, our landing rate was minus 10 feet per minute see how smooth that was literally all I did was just barely pull back on the stick because it transitions quickly all right it goes through the transition into the flare very quickly so just lightly pull back on the stick and I apologize for that other aircraft in there I should have probably just turned off my AI traffic I didn't think about it okay 
but uh, just lightly pull back on, on the yoke or the stick some people say the stick just lightly pull back on the yoke all right while reducing throttle all the way to idle immediately not really slowly you want it to be smooth but it's it's still it's right now we're gonna reduce the throttle all the way to idle all right so if you're struggling with your landings folks I don't care what kind of aircraft you're flying if you're struggling with your landings most likely it's your approach okay if you're not establishing yourself on a stabilized approach early on all right you want to be on a stabilized approach several miles from the airport not at the last minute stabilized approach several miles out okay you establish a stabilized approach early and you're gonna have much more success in your landings now with that being said if you know you're establishing yourself on a stabilized approach and you know you're doing it early on and you're still struggling with your landings it is your transition or your lack thereof okay rather than flying the aircraft like a lawn dart and pointing it at the runway and then yanking back on the yoke to try and put it on the ground what you need to do is you need to get that transition uh, that transition phase in there so trans you saw in the in the King Air you know between 10 and 20 feet you know you lightly pull back on the yoke you roll the throttles back you know the aircraft levels off a little then starts to descend and then you sort of go into the flare from there whereas in our 737 you saw it's very quick you hit 10 feet and 10 feet is your transition point in this aircraft throttle comes all the way back pull back lightly on the yoke to level the aircraft and it just settles that last 10 feet down to the ground very smoothly it's still a transition phase you're transitioning at 10 feet you're just transitioning from uh, you're transitioning back in our now my brain doesn't freaking want to work again you're just transitioning from the descent to the flare quicker in the 737 keep it in mind we were doing 127 knots all right so it's a faster transition than it is when we're doing 90 knots in a King Air 200 but the point is still the same three aspects to a good landing folks you've got the approach you've got the transition and then the touchdown the touchdown and the flare go hand in hand remember the transition is not the flare the flare comes after the transition the transition is the point between the flare and the descent where you level the aircraft briefly to bleed off that last little bit of speed and have control over how fast it's descending to the runway if you're not putting a transition in there if you're just waiting and then yanking back on the yoke or for some of you you might not even be doing that you might just be putting the nose in the ground you're never going to have smooth landings keep in mind and I, I don't remember if I mentioned a little while ago or not but a smooth landing anything between zero and and minus 200 feet per minute that's a smooth landing folks think about it for a minute how long is a football field it's 300 feet long okay so how, if it takes you a minute to move two-thirds the length of a football field how fast you move it not very fast that's a smooth landing all right but if your landings are up in five six seven hundred feet per minute your passengers are having a rough day and it, let me tell you if you're over 700 feet per minute uh, well you probably <laughs> you need to work on it believe me because in the real world your passengers probably are, are consulting with their uh, accident injury lawyer at this point all right so I was going to do another aircraft, I was going to do an, uh, a larger aircraft, but really just ran out of time here. This video is already plenty long, so let me just leave you with this. Keep in mind the three aspects to a good landing. You've got a stabilized, established on a stabilized approach early. You've got the transition phase and then the touchdown phase. All right, practice those. Practice them in smaller aircraft, practice them in larger aircraft, and the 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 principle is the same no matter what airplane you're flying okay bigger airplanes are going to require a little more speed and a little more attention to that control this 737 is like this thing's like a little ferrari man this thing is this thing is sweet to fly you fly a 777 which is a beautiful airplane and i love them but you're going to have to start actually transitioning at about 20 feet in that aircraft all right that's it for now that's that's all I got for landings. If you have any questions about this or comments or you'd like to see something added, subtracted, whatever, you guys get the point. Uh, let me know down in the comments. Take a minute to subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate everybody who subscribes. And that's all for me. I'm Captain Mac. You folks have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the skies.
turn left, turn left onto Charlie, contact her.